Okay, so for our summary today, we've got the order 0, 1, and 2. These are the three rate laws a to the 0 power, a to the 1, a to the 2. Okay, differential rate law we won't use. We're going to use the integrated rate law. I'm going to write it in its line fashion, the way it looks like y equals mx plus v. And that's this way a equals minus kt plus a naught. So you don't have to be able to derive it for our class. Um, I'll give it to you, you just have to know how to use it. Okay. Um, so this is y equals mx plus b. So m is minus k, that's the slope. It's uh, a versus t, so y versus x. And then a naught, in this case, is the y-intercept, b. OK, in this case, uh, you get the natural log. So it's natural log of a equals minus kt plus the natural log of a naught. Here, y equals mx plus b. y is natural log of a. Slope is still minus k. And it's t, so it's y versus x. Uh, natural log of a naught, that whole quantity is b, the y-intercept. And then, uh, we haven't done it yet, but we'll do it soon in class. 1 over a, this has a reciprocal sort of look to it, is positive kt plus 1 over a naught of a naught. So, when you get through the derivation, these are reciprocals. So y would be 1 over a, mx, here's positive. So the slope actually equals k in this case, plus b. So b here is a quantity 1 over a naught. OK, we also found the half-lives. Again, these formulas I'm going to give to you. So the half-life in the first case, so t one half is our half-life, uh, is equal to a naught over 2k. So to find the half-life in the first case, you need k, the rate constant, and the initial concentration. In the second case, it's a little different. It's just natural log of 2 over k. So natural log of 2, is that's just a number, it's 0.693. So k is all you need in the second case. That initial concentration is irrelevant. So the initial concentration does not affect how the half-life goes down. OK. So this half-life doesn't change over time, but this one will change. OK. And then finally, for the last one, uh, the half-life is 1 over k. So again, it looks a little different. It should. It's for the second order. Uh, but uh, you need to know k and a naught to get the second order half-life. Again, the first or order half-life or first order reaction is most common. The most common many is the middle <laughs> line. And then there was uh, one more category, the plot. And I'll show you how to use this after I write this down. Here, in each of these cases, a very specific plot will get you a line. The reason we care about the line is we can analyze it using algebra. We can figure out the slope and the y-intercept. So here, if you plot A versus T, A versus T, you get a line. The slope is minus K. So if you multiply the slope by minus 1, you'll have your rate constant, and your y-intercept will be a naught. In the second case, it's different. You have to do what's called semi-log plot, natural log of a versus t. So there, if you plot that, you'll also get a line. It'll also have a negative slope going downwards as you go to the right. Its slope is minus k, so the negative slope is your rate constant. And its y-intercept is this whole quantity, natural log a naught. And then finally, here, you'll plot 1 over a versus time to get a line. Again, a versus time is not going to get it to you. That would look uh, more like a y equals 1 over x plot. So here, 
uh, k is, is the, actually your slope. So your slope is your rate constant in this case. This goes upwards. Looks, as you go to the right, the line goes up. Uh, and then 1 over a naught is your y-intercept. Unfortunately for you, there's a lot of possible problems that can come out of this table. One is purely using the rate law. So and I'm talking about calculation problems. Purely using the rate law, we give you all but one variable. So for example, we give you k and t and a naught. In each of those cases, you can find an a. You need to be familiar with your reciprocals and with your logs to solve it. Uh, or for example, we give you a and k and t. And so you find a naught to your initial concentration. Whatever, it's kind of a plug and chug sort of problem. That's one type of problem. Another sort of problem, we give you the half-life. And you find k, or vice versa, you have k and a naught, and you find a half-life. So here, you use these formulas, and these are plug and chug also. A third type of problem. So if you want to know the types of problems you will see, you should be writing these down. You can combine these two sort of questions. So we give you the half-life and we give you the initial concentration. You find K and then we ask you for the final concentration in that, that sort of question. So you're combining these two. I don't give you K, I give you half-life. So you need to calculate K using the half-life formula. So that's a common combo problem. Another common problem, I give you data. You have to plot it, and based, you have to do this plot, this plot, and this plot, whichever one gives you a line, that's the order of the reaction. And once you find the slope of the line, you can find K. If I give you data, let's say I give you 10 data points, 1 through 10, which data points would you most like, would you guess to take to find the slope? Would you guess, would you take points 2 and 3? 6 and 7, 8 and 10. When you're using experiments, you always take the outer liars. So you take point 0.1 and point 0.10, the two most extreme ones. Unless for some reason they don't go on the line, you want to take them. But take the ones on the line that are the most <coughs> far apart from each other to get the most accurate answer. OK? Um, another combo problem. You plot this. Find out what k is, and then you use k here. So I don't give you k, but I give you data points, and you use it here. Um, and or, uh, you have to plot all three, because uh, they don't tell you the order, so you don't know which integrated rate law to find. The one that gives you a line when you plot all three. So only one of these three plots will give you a line. So if you have data and you do this plot, this plot, so only one will be a line. The rest will be curvaceous. Uh, that'll tell you the order and tell you which integrated rate law to use to do, say, do calculation. Okay? Do you see how? Yeah. Um, for the third plot, um, I'm not sure if k is a positive if k is a slope and it's positive, what does that mean for like the rate relative to one and zero one? How does the rate change? The the rate will it goes extremely fast for the second order, and you can see that with the square. So it's y equals x squared. This is, so this is a constant rate, doesn't change. This one's pretty much linear. And this one, it's, uh, you know, y equals x squared, it goes up really fast. So this is going to be a very fast rate. Uh, and it will also change, the half-life will also change with the initial concentration. So it could be changeable. <coughs> Any other questions about this or types of questions you might see? So these sort of questions you got to be careful with. They can come in all different sort of forms. Um, and what you're going to see later also, A and A naught don't have to be in molarity. So they could be in other units. <laughs> Mass can work. Other, other units can work. You're going to see other units when we get to nuclear chemistry especially. But other units besides molarity will be fine, actually. It doesn't have to be.